Whoosh. Ryan Seymour here with Breeze Fabrication and LPR, and today we're taking a look at the Techno Toy Tuning Weld On Lower Control Arm Kit for the A86 Corolla. Now I'm going to be running you through some of the features of this kit, as well as the way that I prefer to remove the suspension components, lower control arms, as well as prepping them, cutting lower control arms, and then taking you through the welding process as well. Now that the car is securely up on jack stands with the wheels off, first thing we're going to do is remove the brake calipers and the caliper bracket and get those zip tied up and out of the way so we have room to work. Do that by starting out with this 12 millimeter bolt. As well as removing the clip that supports the brake line. Now at this point, I'm basically going to use some zip ties just to help keep this guy up out of the way while we work and do the rest of the modifications. Now our next step is to pull the brake pads out, which should just come right out. Now if you're going to be reusing the same brake pads, it'd be nice to label them. So that way you know which one's the inside, outside, as well as passenger and driver side. So keep these off to the side. Now I'll be taking off this caliper bracket, which is two 17 millimeter bolts. Keep in mind, there are shims here for the brake pads, so be mindful of uh, where they are, so that way when you put it all back together, that you put everything back correctly. Now our next step is to come back here and take off the tie rod in, which is a 19 millimeter bolt. But you're going to want to hit it with an impact wrench, easiest way of doing it. Should come right off. Now these guys are tapered, so you're either going to need a pickle fork, which is a nickname for a uh, ball joint remover, or if you see these areas where it sticks out, you could take a brass hammer and give it a couple good whacks on here, not on the actual tie rod threads here and it should just pop right out. I'm going to pull down on this while I hit on this. Not Be careful not to hit the threads. It should just pop right out. Now our next step is we're going to be there's two 19 millimeter bolts that connect the knuckle to the strut casing. We're going to go on ahead and remove those. Now that there's nothing left holding your struts in, the only thing left to do is to remove these three nuts holding it in. Now you're going to want to hold on to the actual strut casing itself because if you don't, it'll drop out of the bottom causing damage to your parts or your feet or anything else that you may have laying down there. Use a pair of angled cutters, take this cotter pin out for the ball joint knuckle, 
Now using a 22 millimeter socket on an impact gun, I'm going to hold the knuckle, get rid of that castle nut. Now this is basically the same thing as last time with the uh, tie rod in, where this is tapered. So we're going to shoot some PB blaster into here. We'll wait a couple minutes and we'll give it a couple good whacks here and see if we get lucky on getting this guy out. Now the reason why we're taking these off is I'll be removing the ball joints as well and replacing these with new units, but even if I wasn't, I always like to remove any type of joint or bearing or anything that holds grease when I do welding because you don't want to heat up that grease and cause, potentially cause a fire or also put heat into bearings to distort them or into joints and distort them as well. Now we have our sway bar end links that need to be removed. I'll also be replacing these and the sway bar with a new unit with this particular build. But to remove this, it's 12 millimeter nut on the bottom and this 10 millimeter shaft needs to be held up here as well. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that both tires are off the ground for this because if you have one side on the ground and one side off the ground, that sway bar is still gonna be under tension and it has a possibility to either shoot up or push down. You don't wanna end up with a broken finger. Now that we have the in-link disassembled and the nuts off the bottom of this tension rod, tension rod seems to be uh, stuck on there with some grime and guck. So I'm gonna once again use some PB Blaster, which is a Corolla's best friend. Get in there, wait a couple minutes, and we'll just give it a quick little hit with the pry bar and it should come right apart. Now the only thing left to do is take off this 17 millimeter bolt that connects the lower control arm to the chassis. Obviously with the bigger fucking wrench. After that guy's out, just some wiggling with the pie bar, should drop right out. Now that we have the control arm off, next step is to take out this ball joint. Now this boot does have tie wire around it, which you might have to cut, or if you're lucky, you just pop it off exposing a snap ring that you could take off with some snap ring pliers. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it's ice cold and the sun just set. The world's in distress. I'm feeling like Arthur as I move with the silver plated armor on my chest. I always invest in the best armor that can protect against certain death and bites that can infect and bring a plethora of weapons. Now, with the snap ring removed, these guys are press fitted in. So, if you don't have a press, you need to go to a shop and ask them to press them out, and they should be able to do that for you no problem. Now, with the lower control arm disassembled and isolated, Let's take a look at exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be cutting this section off and getting rid of this old worn out bushing and replacing it with the Techno Toy Tuning Weld On Lower Control Arm Kit. Now what you're doing here is two things. You're replacing this worn out bushing with a brand new heim joint which is going to make your suspension setup feel more solid. And two, this kit gives you the ability to adjust the track width on your vehicle. Now the cool thing about this kit is that the heim joint has left-handed threads that go into a sleeve with right-handed threads that go to the actual mounting point. This means that you don't have to disconnect this when you want to adjust your track. You can just twist it one way or the other 
and see how it's going a little bit longer there and this way we'll bring it back in. Now the other cool thing about this kit is that a piece of metal supplied to help box in and help improve the rigidity of your control arms. Now I'm going to put my cut at three and a quarter inch down from the end of the lower control arm. Now what this does is it puts us in the stock location when this guy is welded in when your heim joints all the way in it leaves us about the stock location of where you would be so then you have your adjustability to bring it out. You can cut this uh, numerous type of ways. You can use a chop saw, four and a half inch hand grinder with a cutoff wheel, a hacksaw. I just happen to choose this because it's what I have out at the time and it's the easiest way to go. Now with the lower control arms cut to length, our next step is removing the paint. Now you want to make sure that you remove all the paint, especially in the area where you're going to be depositing weld, because if a little bit of paint gets left on there, it can actually contaminate the weld and cause failure. Now there's a couple ways that you can remove the paint. You can use a premium epoxy remover and paint remover, also known as aircraft remover, where you brush it on and wait about 15 to 20 minutes and it should bubble up and then you can kind of just scrub it off. Uh, another way is use a four and a half inch hand grinder with a flapper wheel. I have a 60 grit right here. And then also we have a bench mounted six inch grinding wheel that's equipped with a wire wheel. Uh, probably going to be using more of the mechanical means today, but uh, this is a viable option, the chemical means. I would advise kind of to stay away from the sand blasting and glass blasting because that has a tendency to impregnate the material, which can also contaminate the weld. If you're going to do that, I would recommend something along the lines a little bit softer, like walnut shells or something like that. Now with the paint removed, the next step is to tack weld this guy up. Here's the block from Techno Toy Tuning that I have secured with the C-clamp. And this gets welded on to the lower control arm. And then your adjustable sleeve threads in like so. Now the measurement I like to run the distance from that block to the edge of the lower control arm is about 160 thousandths of an inch. This gives you a nice fillet weld all the way around. It's going to be a little bit stronger than an edge weld. Now before you tack weld this, you want to wipe everything down with acetone. When I say everything, I mean everything. You can't be too safe. You want to wipe down what you're welding, your weld surface area, as well as your filler material should all be wiped down with acetone. So I'm going to be welding these up using gas tungsten arc welding process, uh, which is also known as TIG. I have my machine set at about 100 amps, and my flow rate is at 20 CFH using pure argon. I got a number 7 cup with a gas lens. I'm using 332nd, 2% fluoridated tungsten with 1 16th inch ER70 S2 filler wire. Now it's a good filler wire to use for most of your cold rolled steels and uh, low carbon steels. So without further ado, let's tack it up. Now that it's all tacked, the next step is to weld it up. Now I'm going to be welding this block where it comes in contact with any surface of the lower control arm. So all the way around and all the way down in here, which is kind of a tight spot, which is why I chose the TIG welding process to help uh, eliminate spatter that would occur if you were using MIG welding. Now with our threaded block welded into place, the only thing left to do box this guy in. So basically I'm going to run this all the way up to here and do six tacks and then just one continuous weld all the way down. Call it a day. Now with the box up section of these all welded in, the only thing left is to paint these guys or send them out to powder coat and then reassemble. 
Now when you put these guys back on the car and everything back together, you're going to make sure that you want to string the car up or send it out for professional alignment. That's it for me today. As always, have fun, be safe, and happy motoring. Nailed it. Fucking nailed it.